Hi, welcome back to to my channel. This is Elle studying for USMLE and I'm here to help others who are going through the same struggles as I am to get through the material and make it a little easier um, for everyone who is um, struggling with it. Anyways, so um, today we're going to talk about um, hypothalamus in relation to GI, GI physiology. And um, and I'm going to start with um, the different functions of hypothalamus and how it relates to GI physiology and the neurological aspect of GI. You don't want to read, you know, 40 pages on it. You just want to get to the to, to the gist of it and understand where all this happens. Now you're going to do yourself a big favor if you understand hypothalamus from the get-go because it just keeps coming back because it deals with so many autonomic functions. Now the one mnemonic that I always use and I'm sure a lot of people are using the same mnemonic is tan hats. Okay? T stands for thirst and A stands for adeno hypophysis, adeno hypophysis. Uh, N stands for neurohypophysis. Uh, adenohypophysis means the anterior pituitary, and because they both start with A, it's easier to easier to remember. Neurohypophysis is posterior pituitary, the one that's not that the one that doesn't start with an A. So that's pretty easy to remember. The next is H. H is hunger. That's where our GI comes in. A is for autonomic, T is for, uh, is it thirst? No, T is for temperature, S is for sexual urges. Now I'm going to do a separate video on hypothalamus, but I really, really quickly wanted to go over a CT scan. I try to look into CT scan as much as I can, and, and I urge you to do the same because it's just that you we don't look at it and then it comes and then we miss easy questions because we didn't have the time to look at a CT scan or we're not familiar with it. And also when you move on to step two, you do all the clinical rotations, you're going to see so many CT scans, it's just, it just helps in the clinical aspect of it. So first I want to show you this diagram where it's a diagrammatic picture of the hypothalamus. So let me give you a quick, um, quick review or how to navigate this picture. Obviously, this is the brain. This white, this yellow thing is the corpus callosum. This is the lateral ventricle. Right underneath the lateral ventricle, this thing is the optic chiasm. And right beside the optic chiasm is the hypothalamus. And right above the pituitary is the hypothalamus. It's this gives you a little bit of idea where exactly the hypothalamus is. And this is the pons, it's right above the pons. So, you know, you see the little gap here? Hypothalamus would be right there. Now, this is a diagrammatic uh, picture, so it's much easier to understand. Let's go to a picture or a CT scan where it's a little more harder because hypothalamus is such a small structure, it's very easy to get lost. Now, this is a CT scan, and where it shows the hypothalamus is, again, I'm going to orient you with the picture. This is the brain. This is the corpus callosum, lateral ventricle, optic chiasm, and bam, hypothalamus. This is probably the pituitary, so it's above the pituitary. It's above the pons, kind of in a 10 degree angle, so, so that you get an idea of exactly where the hypothalamus is. Again, this is a different picture where this is a much smaller picture, but it's best to get different pictures so that you know you don't you know you don't get confused and you're really sure how to navigate the CT scan. Here is the hypothalamus, which here is the pons. You see the little gap here, and right above the gap, this would be the hypothalamus. This would be the pituitary, and this would be the optic chiasm, lateral ventricle and corpus callosum, brain, and that's it. Now, so that's where the CT scan of hypothalamus comes in, just to give you a quick review. Now, going back to our topic, where we're talking about uh, hypothalamus, the neurology of it, what stimulates it, and all that. Now, when we're talking about hunger, 
um, there is two parts of the hunger center of the hypothalamus and they are medial and lateral. The medial is responsible for um, I often I often forget it uh, actually. Sorry, I'm gonna start with the lateral one. The lateral the lateral is um, is the one that's responsible for hunger. The lateral one is responsible for hunger, where the medial one is responsible for satiety. Now the lateral one, if that is destroyed or if something affects the hunger center, then we're not gonna feel hungry anymore we're going to be suffering from anorexia or the unwillingness or not feeling hungry at all. It's anorexia is not um, it's 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 different from anorexia nervosa so I want you to make the distinction anorexia means that not having the urge to eat uh, where the medial is responsible for satiety and if that is destroyed, then we have hyperphagia. Okay, now just to give you an idea of what happens if they are destroyed. Now, um, also, what really stimulates the hunger center, medial or lateral, whether it's for I'm, I'm hungry or I'm full, what really stimulates it? Now, there is two things that stimulate the hunger center. One is a neurotransmitter, the other is glucose. So low levels of glucose will stimulate the lateral hunger center and it will tell the body that yes, we are hungry. So the, fun, the one thing that stimulates it is glucose, low level of glucose, where in terms of um, neurotransmitter the two neurotransmitter responsible for stimulating hunger is norepinephrine and serotonin for lateral um, the one that will stimulate satiety is high level of glucose And also um, distension, stomach distension. So that's why it's more important to eat vegetables because it will give us the illusion that we are not hungry anymore because our stomach stomach is distending. Now, in terms of neurotransmitter, again, it's norepi and serotonin. Okay, uh, norepi and serotonin. Now, um, so those are the neurology, the neurotransmitters, and the low levels of glucose that's responsible for stimulating hunger. Now, if there is a lesion in the hunger center, or uh, if no, sorry, if there is a lesion in the satiety center, we're going to eat hyperphagia. What disease is associated with hyperphagia? I'll give you a second to think about it. That's right, you thought about it right. It's Prader Willi. Prader Willi is uh, responsible for causing hyperphagia and it's due to parental disomy. Now, just you know, whenever you're studying for your simile, it's always good to relate things. You've heard this a million times, but I like to do it all the time so that it gives my mind fluid from one topic to the next. To the next and also which um, which drug is responsible for releasing lots and lots of epinephrine norepinephrine and serotonin yep you're right it is amphetamine so that's why people a lot of Hollywood celebrities take amphetamines to not get hungry and because it will stimulate their satiety center. Anyways, that's all for the neurology of the GI. Keep studying, keep working hard, and I'll see you in our next video. Bye.